Greetings, everyone. It is Ryder, and today the Lord wanted me to come on and share this quick word with you. And the title of this message is All Christians Must Evangelize. All Christians Must Evangelize. And I know that the Lord just wants me to get right into this. This isn't a prophetic word. This isn't about something that God told me that will come to pass or anything that he showed me in a dream or a vision that will come to pass. Um, he wanted me to come on and talk about the importance of evangelism and how all Christians, all who have repented and accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, believing that he has died on the cross to pay the price for all of our sins, we are all called to do the work of an evangelist. We may not have been appointed to the office of an evangelist, but we're all called to evangelize, just like how not everyone who has the gift of prophecy is a prophet, you know? But yeah, um, with all that being said, I know that the Lord just wants me to get right into this. So the first thing that I thought of was that actually, you know, and God reminded me of these passages is like, um, it's at the end of the book of Matthew. It's Matthew, um, you know, 28, 16 to 20. And these were the last words that Jesus spoke to his disciples in the book of Matthew after, you know, he was risen after he was resurrected. And it reads, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. For this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Jesus had said all authority in heaven on earth had been given to him, and he told us to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So that's the first part, to go and make disciples of all nations. He didn't just appoint some of his disciples to do this, he appointed all of them. You know, he had said, therefore go, like, to the whole group of them and make disciples of all nations. We're all called to make disciples of the nations. We might not all be going overseas and doing missions work, but there is a battleground in our own backyards, in our own neighborhoods, our own homes, our own communities, even in the churches. Do you really think that everybody at the church that you're going to is saved? No, there's a lot of false Christian. There's a lot of fake Christians. There's people that think that they're Christians, but they're not truly saved because they haven't repented and accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They still believe the myth that you go to heaven by being a good person or they just go because it's like a social club or they just go for the music so there's a battleground in your church there's a battleground in your home if there's unsafe people in your home there's a battleground in your community and we're called to go and share our faith with others and it doesn't always have to be you know like some big extravagant thing like you don't have to go and be like you know like like you know doing like street preaching and stuff if that's not what you're called to do but we can always hand out gospel tracts we can witness to people one-on-one. -on -one. We can share our faith with them. You know, like sometimes God does have me witness to people one-on-one -on -one, and a lot of times the lead-off is he's given me a message to give to them and it's something that he showed me in a dream or a vision and then, you know, I try to take the message, the warning, whatever it is and try to wrap it up with the gospel, you know, because the whole point of this is to bring people back to Christ, you know? Like God doesn't just give me these messages for my own sake or for entertainment purposes or to scare people. It's to bring people back to Christ, you know? So we all have the call to evangelize. It can even be passing out gospel tracts, you know? So like, even if you're shy, even if you're afraid, you can always witness to people one-on-one -on -one and you can always pass out gospel tracts or at the very least leave them in places for people to find, you know? So I think that those are all great ways to evangelize and to share your faith with others, you know? And one thing that I have noticed with some Christians, you know, and, I, like, I don't want to go into all of it, you know, but I feel very strongly about this where, like, I've seen Christians where they'll say, like, oh, well, we'll spread the gospel with our hands and feet. We'll spread the gospel by showing people God's love and doing good works. And 
I think that it's good to do good works and to show people the love of Christ. Like, obviously, it's good to help those that are in need. It's good to give to the homeless. It's good to, like, take care of those where nobody else takes care of them. Like, of course, and that's what God wants us to do. So many of the testaments and the, the, so many of the prophets in the Old Testament, you know, they were telling the Israelites before they were brought into captivity into Babylon, they were telling them, like, you have, you need to take care of the poor, the fatherless, the widows, the oppressed, you know, like, like the four in your land, the people that were neglected and pushed to the side, you know, so we are called to do those things. But the thing is, like, I personally don't believe that that's sharing the gospel, you know, like, sharing the gospel, like you're talking about, you know, how we've all sinned and we've fallen short of God's grace, you know, how the punishment for that sin is death and eternity and hell, you know, but that Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay the price for all of our sins. He lived the perfect sinless life that you and I could not, fully God, fully human. He died on that cross. He was placed in a tomb. He rose from the dead on the third day, and he is now seated at the right hand of God, crowned in glory and majesty. He conquered death in the grave because he lived the sinless life that you and I could not, and he atoned for all of our sins. And if we simply turn from our sins and turn to Jesus, accept him as our personal Lord and Savior, we will have eternal life. We will be resurrected with Christ and we will spend eternity with God in heaven. And that is the gospel, you know? And I think, you know, like, good works, you know, like, doing kind things for people, like, I don't know about everyone else, but if someone did something kind for me, you know, like, when I wasn't saved, I'd just be like, oh, thank you, that was really kind of you, but, like, that wouldn't lead to me being saved, you know? And I think that at a certain point, we need to get over our own fears, you know, like, we should be doing good works and evangelizing, you know, like, both are needed, you know, and I think in the book of James, it talks about it as well, you know, like, when he talks about, like, faith and good works, but I, I think that, you know, doing good works for people, like, isn't sharing the gospel with them, you know, like, we need to share it with our mouths, we need to talk about our faith, we need to call people to repent and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and I think sometimes people are too afraid to do that, and they'd rather hide behind the good works and be comfortable because they're afraid of being mocked, they're afraid of being ridiculed, they're afraid of being judged, and I've had that fear in the past as well, but I've gotten to this point where, like, the call that God has put on me, like, it just feels like it's burning inside of me, and I feel like it's at the point where, like, if I don't open my mouth, I feel like I'm going to explode. So like all this push to go out and do the street preaching and the other types of evangelism, it's something that has been like building inside of me. And I felt like if I held it in any longer, I was going to burst, you know, and I know that that's from God. You know, so it's like people can think I'm crazy. They can think, you know, that I'm being rude, that I'm just shouting in the streets, that I'm crazy. It's fine. I'm doing what God is telling me to do. That's the call that he has put upon me during this time in my life. And, you know, like, I just think that sometimes people are too afraid, and I'm thankful that God has given me the courage and the boldness to go forth and do this, and I think that if we pray for that courage and that boldness, God will give it to us, you know, because we're called to be bold for Christ, we're called to be soldiers for Christ. So if people think that you're crazy, if they think that you're weird, you know, if they like don't understand why you're doing the things that you're doing why you're living the way that you're living it's fine I've realized I'd rather people dislike me and the things that I have to say in this life than not hear the gospel and spend eternity in hell you know I, you have to remember when it comes to these things that people's souls are at stake and if we truly love these people because you know the first commandment you know the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul all your mind and all your strength and the second is to love our neighbor as ourselves how can you say that you love someone and do kind works for them but not care about their soul? You care for their physical needs but you don't care about where they're going to spend all of eternity? You care about their needs here on earth but not in the afterlife? Like, we really need to pause and think about that, and we need to think about where people's souls are going to be and what's at stake. And, you know, like, even in the Bible, it says that, you know, like, cowards will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's Revelation um, 21, 8. It says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fire lake of burning fire. This is the second death cowards, you know, people who, you know, God has called, you know, but they're too afraid 
to do what God has called them to do. They're too afraid to share their faith. And I think about that often. If the fear is getting in the way that cowards are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. We need to be bold. We need to ask Christ for boldness. And we need to push past our fears so that we can, you know, help people come to Christ and they don't spend eternity in hell. So for now, take care, stay safe, have a wonderful rest of the day, and know that Jesus loves you. And